which is part of its strategic plan until 2016. The digital content, the content that it provides and is served to it, the informatics infrastructure that enables the um, amalgamation and serving of the digital content, and the engagement uh, with all of the data providers in all of the countries, both in, in achieving more digital content, in training, and uh, so forth. The advice of the Science Committee in the past four years is GBIF must now run as fast as it can to ensure new data types and, as we have been talking, improving the fitness for use of its digital content. Most of the new data types will now be genomic biodiversity. In informatics infrastructure, GBIF desperately needs to work with the community in developing uh, global university identifiers for its data so that it can cite it better uh, and provide provider feedback and citations on the use of its data. And in terms of engagement, one of the areas GBIF is uh, 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 looking to, to uh, go forward is effective training that is targeted to specific audiences. And this course, although not sponsored by GBIF, is an excellent example of how training can be targeted to specific audiences. This is also one of the recommendations. All of these three recommendations were from uh, the forward look study of GBIF that was chaired by town. Finally, uh, unifying species data uh, from collections, from genomics, from ecological monitoring is um, a goal of GBIF. My own uh, view of this, the major, major increase in uh, the future of GBIF and the biodiversity information it will serve will come from microbial life. And it must do this not by itself, but by, with partners. Finally, um, GBIF operates at the data science interface, delivering data sets, which now it says it wants to align with IPES assessment needs. If IPES is going to be assessing the biodiversity and ecological states of the planet, GBIF wants to be ready and able to provide the essential data for IPES to do its work. IPES will do policy questions from governments and respond to governments' policy questions. Thank you. Questions? We've probably been very, very hard on GBIF, but that's fine. GBIF is, a, uh, like I say, the most successful multilateral uh, organization I know of. Its service to the biodiversity and biological and environmental community is irreplaceable, and uh, the views that Town and I have presented rather than being seen as hitting on GBIF, should be seen as wanting to make it even better. And there are no finer supporters of GBIF, and there's no others who have given GBIF uh, as much time and energy as Town and I have done. Questions? Selwyn. Um, yeah, taking again a institutional approach to, to, to what you're talking about, Given the change in, in the real line of GBIF as its core business, is that being reflected in the way GBIF as a secretary in providing the functions being structured and the way it sees the financial model for the future? Uh, to mirror the, the change in the business. Right. Uh, so I sit on the executive committee of GBIF by virtue of being chair of the science committee, and I can tell you that each of those subjects, the restructuring of the secretariat, uh, to be more responsive to uh, the future needs of GBIF, to be more responsive to uh, a different governance model 
a different budgetary model, a different fiscal model, and a different operational model and work program model is all uh, under very deep discussions and uh, uh, recommendations and options are about to be presented to the governing board for their consideration and, and uh, comment, review, and voting. Certainly, GBIF is, uh, is thinking very strongly based on the recommendations of a task force uh, that it assembled, that it, it needs to prioritize and very strongly identify its core activities that serve that core mission. And, uh, and separate that from, perhaps, uh, from activities that are one-offs, that are special needs that uh, certain countries uh, might need. Just that separation into core and special projects or supplementary projects would necessitate um, a change in how the Secretariat works, the whole operational manner. Um, and indeed would also um, have consequences for uh, how the governance of GPIF works and how the, the whole payment structure and support, financial support of GPIF works. Uh, with GBIF moving from a startup concern now to a high growth concern, this kind of looking in on itself to say, okay, imagine if GBIF is a company that has gone from a startup to a high growth, that company would look at itself and want to say, okay, we need now a new governance structure, a new financial model, and a new operational model that fits a high growth concern, not a startup concern. And that's what GBIF is doing now. Yeah, because the only concern I had is if in the operations you want to change gear, but in terms of the structure, how are you dealing with that? It doesn't, it won't work in the future. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely won't work. You're absolutely right. If, if uh, they're changing their, um, their operational structure and their governments doesn't, and their governance and fiscal arrangement doesn't change accordingly. Yeah. Jean. Uh, um, Christos, uh, you are aware of the success of GB in, let's say, giving a huge quantity of data, more than 400 million. And I think that GBIF's, GBIF's new mission now, its success depends on, let's say, using uh, those data and to, let's say, turn them into useful information for decision making and solving relevant problems. And this is, uh, let's say, of uh, very high priority for developing countries to engage our government to support us financially in developing countries. It's very important. Correct. So one of the, let's say, the struggle we, we need to, to, to make now at GBIF level globally and also at regional level is that um, we assure that the gap analysis, data curation, and also the usefulness of data be demonstrated, uh, let's say, even at the, at the node level to encourage such, such processes. It's very important. And uh, let's say, I'm very happy because of uh, GBIF decentralization at the regional level, and we have some, let's say, people here around the table. Uh, Selwyn is there, uh, Fatima, uh, also um, uh, Alex from Ghana and, uh, and me. We are aware and we can, at the, at the regional level, try to, let's say, uh, make use of all the information we hear here, okay, to, to try to, to do best at the regional level. And we need, of course, your support. I think it's an excellent statement. Uh, if I can briefly summarize that uh, for African, for these African countries and African biodiversity, what is uh, critical for GBIF to do is to plug the leaks, as Town has been saying, fill the gaps, get the biodiversity data that is hosted by northern institutions, captured, digitized, and repatriated so that the southern countries have a much better 
uh, view of their biodiversity. It may be their biodiversity of the past, but at least it's a baseline biodiversity uh, with which to start. Um, and to, to uh, have a collaborative effort with the providers in um, making huge steps in improving the fitness for use. And indeed, uh, many of the countries representing in, in GBIF and voting in GBIF are here, represented here. And um, I think uh, all power to the uh, African countries to pound on the table and, and say this is a way forward, the way forward for GBIF. Lucy. I'm very encouraged to see all the papers you have cited, which I'm sure there are plenty more. Many, many more. Using. Many more. And it seems to be from our context, sometimes just being aware of the potential use of the GBIF data can present the demand for more data and for better data, even from our region. So I'm wondering if there's a way, and it's probably just a simple matter of having a link I don't know if anyone harvests all papers or tries to link to papers that have used GBIF data that we can, you know, sort of a site we can go to that says here are studies done using GBIF data that are published. Because reading those already yes. you know, gives one several ideas of things they can do in their country or demand data to get some right. of that cleaned up for some of those applications. That's an excellent uh, uh, point. And if I'm not mistaken, I haven't looked uh, at the new portal uh, in great detail. But if I'm not mistaken, one of the links on the new portal is exactly that, okay. is uh, all the um, studies that have been published that at least cite the use of GBIF data. There are many studies published where the authors don't cite, yeah. even though they've used GBIF data, they don't cite it. So for example, Sammy Gagey at, at, uh, in the Secretariat and his assistant um, uh, regularly troll uh, Mendeley and, and, and other sources to see uh, for uh, citations of GBIF uh, data use in published papers and then those are put into the okay. uh, site. So it is there. And if it's not there, yes. if you don't find it, then by all means you should send a note to Donald Hoburn or, or Sammy and see uh, that should be an essential link to the to the portal, but I'm 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 almost uh, you know definite that it's there. Right. I'll check. I just uh, have a, just wondering why a country like Canada, yeah, which hosts the CBD Secretariat, is falling off from this. Uh, right. So so the question is a good question. Uh, why a country like Canada, which is host to the CBD in Montreal, uh, is not a, uh, or is a lapsed member of GBIF? Um, there's a polite answer, a political answer, or there's a brutally honest answer. Uh, the, brutally, uh, the polite answer is that uh, Canada has had economic difficulties along with every other country and re-examined its priorities, at least the agency or the department or ministry responsible for the GBIF payment uh, re-examined its priorities. Uh, there's a conservative government in, in place right now and that, for that conservative government, biodiversity is not um, uh, a number one issue, so they dropped out of GBIF. Uh, they haven't dropped out of the CBD, but they dropped out of GBIF. Um, a more brutally honest answer is that uh, in countries with many ministries and, and many and, and bureaucracies, and I'm, I would imagine Kenya is not much different, um, it's often left to one ministry and one department and one ministry to pay the GBIF bill. And if that ministry gets cut, they have to decide, am I going to cut from, say, Canada's forests or a GBIF payment, or Canada's fisheries or a GBIF payment. So uh, it, needs a, um, it needs a champion in that ministry. And if the champion is voted out of office and a new government comes in, 
That's what happens. We are hoping, GBIF is hoping, that Canada will come back. And uh, there's every hope that it will. But that's an excellent point. There's no Canada has no business not being in GBIF. <laughs>